Okay, my name is Miss Dame, a teacher at CI Gibson Senior High School, and we have been doing this for about eight, nine weeks now. Okay, so today we're going to look at an aspect of tourism that is called ecotourism. So to begin today's lesson, I am going to show a quick video. What is ecotourism? Ecotourism is a term used to describe travel to areas where active steps are taken to conserve and protect the environment and improve the economic and social well-being of local people. Ecotourism can be found in many different parts of the world. This term is often used in relation to tourist visits to natural environments such as rainforests. It can also be applied to managed or man-made environments such as urban areas. There are three key principles to ecotourism. The first key principle is to involve local communities in the development of ecotourism. It is important that communities maintain control over the level and kind of tourism they want in their land. Money from tourism projects should be invested in the communities who are hosting tourists rather than just to operators based outside the area. Infrastructure projects that are built to serve and encourage tourism, such as new facilities, accommodation, roads or electricity, should also be built to benefit local communities as well as visitors. The second principle is to reduce the negative impact on the environment. Ecotourism often involves visits to remote and environmentally sensitive natural areas, such as forests, dunes or glacial areas. Visitors undertaking these trips should try to make sure that they follow any rules regarding litter and wildlife disturbance, and ensure that personal use of resources such as water is sustainable. Venues that host ecotourism activities, such as hotels and restaurants, should ensure sustainable practices such as using renewable energy and minimizing waste. The third principle is to respect the rights of local people. Many tourists visit a location in order to learn about local cultures and traditions. The people with the greatest knowledge about a destination are the people who actually live there, and ecotourism ventures should be managed by local communities using their experiences and expertise to promote local cultures and traditions. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our video. So just to quickly go over some of the things that were mentioned in the video. So they spoke about, okay, so they spoke about cultures and traditions, persons traveling to get a feel of different cultures, different traditions. They also spoke about wildlife, okay? They also looked at sustainable practices as well. So when, I, when you hear the word ecotourism, okay? When you hear the word ecotourism, what comes to mind? Share some responses with me in our chat. I want to hear what comes to mind when you hear the word ecotourism. Think about it. So you have two, you have two key terms in there. You hear the word eco and then you hear the word tourism. Okay. So remember, we have just been looking at tourism last week. Okay. So you already have an idea as to what tourism is. Okay. Some of the details that is also included. Okay. So I like that he says it's about people coming to our country to enjoy nature. Okay, very good answer. Okay, so thank you guys for chiming in. So let's quickly go over our lesson objectives for today. So we have three objectives that we intend to um, assist us in guiding this lesson. So first of all, I want you to be able to define ecotourism. Next, we're going to examine some advantages and disadvantages of ecotourism. And lastly, we want to be able to analyze the importance of ecotourism as well. So as Garland said, he talked about nature. He spoke about nature. So let's, let's quickly go over some of, let's quickly go over the definition, I would say, of ecotourism. Okay. So definitely when you think about ecotourism, you, like I said, you hear two words in there. You hear the word eco, you hear the word tourism, okay? So of course you want to think about ecology. I don't know how many of you have heard about ecology, okay? Um, maybe you've heard, of, heard about it in bio, and it's definitely talking about in the environment, okay? It's also talking about interacting with different organisms and their physical um, surroundings as well. 
Okay, so I have three points here. So I'm just gonna quickly go over these three points with you to help us to understand what ecotourism is more about. Okay, so firstly we see here, so the use of the natural wild, wildlife environment for leisure and tourism promotions, okay? So you have the use of natural wildlife environment. Next, you're gonna see it is the concept of responsible tourism for ecology-minded tourists. And lastly, we also see here, this natural environment attraction is the fastest growing sector in the tour tourist trade for an annual growth rate of 10 to 15% worldwide. Okay, so of course, when you look, thinking about ecotourism, you want to think about tourists actually traveling for any reason that has to do with them enjoying the actual natural environment. Okay, so ecotourism is going to involve, we already talked about, or we already mentioned the ecology minded tourists. So these are persons who enjoy the environment, persons wanting to come for different reasons. Okay, so we're going to also look at some of the different examples of ecotourism. Okay, next, another thing that's going to be involved, you're gonna have persons um, exploration of nature. Okay, whether you're going to a forest area, you're going to the coastal area. Okay, so for economic reasons that will protect flora, fauna and culture. So two words there. I'm not sure if you are familiar with these two words, but I'm going back to the chat. And I want you to tell me what is flora and what is fauna. Okay, Marsha. Excellent. Okay, Marsha. Good job. So Marsha says flora is plants. Okay. So flora is plants. What about fauna? Harry says plants and animals. Yes. Okay. So good job, guys. So thank you. So of course, the flora is going to be referring to plants and the fauna is going to be referring to animals. Okay. So if you ever hear these terms, that is what you're going to think about. So you have your plants and you have your animals and they can actually be used interchangeably. Okay. Another thing that's going to be involved is your purposeful travel to natural environments. Okay. So persons coming, they want to study the natural environment. They don't want to just um, sit up on the cruise ship. They want to be a part of the ecosystem. Okay. And lastly, we see here responsible for the promotion of tourism committed to conserving natural areas and heritage. So conservation is also very important when you want to think about um, ecotourism as well. And of course, we have some different um, organizations, even right here in the Bahamas, that is big on conservation. Places like Brief, Bahamas National Trust, okay? So let's look at ecotourism in the Bahamas. Let's look at ecotourism in the Bahamas. So of course we have different, different environmental landscapes across the Bahamas, okay? And therefore we are definitely able to offer tourists a part of our environmental area, okay? And let's look at some of the things that the Bahamas is well known for. So I, I looked up, some information you can even go back to the website as well so i used there's a um, islands of the bahamas website and as it is stated here when it comes to nature the bahamas has some of the most intriguing exotic and mysterious natural phenomena on the planet okay and i, I don't know if you if you have heard them talk about how the bahamas actually looks from space okay how you could see the pristine blue turquoise waters okay even from space and there are some reasons for that as well okay um so some of the things that are very notable here we definitely have the dean's blue hole located in long island you have here located in the bahamas you have the third largest fringing barrier reef we also have a very large colony of pink flamingos down there in inago as well Okay, and there are definitely some other things in the Bahamas as it relates to the Bohemian parrot that is found in Abaco. Okay, you also have a lot of um, iguanas as well. So there are some different, of course, you know, we have uh, the coral reefs that tourists tend to travel to the Bahamas for. 
okay? And of course, the coral reef is going to come with the different marine organisms and species that actually live on the coral reef as well. Okay, so these are all reasons why, of course, you'll have tourists wanting to come to the Bahamas to experience this ecotourism. Okay, so nature preserves protect the endangered Bahama parrot and several species of endangered iguanas. Okay, you have, let's take a, you have the marine protected areas. You actually have marine, um, you have other parks as well that protect these different species. And in most cases, when they're coming close to being endangered, okay? So Andres is one of those islands that, are, that is most notable for your ecotourism. And the reason because of this is because Andres, because of course it's very large, okay? And, it, and in the, the scenery on Andres, of course it differs from the north to the south, okay? But when you're looking at the western side of Andres, you're gonna see a lot of nurseries. Okay, a lot of habitats for different species. Okay, so just gonna quickly go over the information that we have here on this slide. So Andres is the ecotourism destination of the Bahamas because of its large, pristine, terrestrial and marine ecosystem. So, okay, so the Western side, of course, would be this side here, okay, of Andres is a nursery for countless marine and wildlife species. Okay, it's also the largest protective park system in our country as well. Okay, so just to mention Andres, but you have many other islands where ecotourism is also the focus. Places like Apico, you have um, Inagua, Grand Bahama, of course, the Exomas, San Salvador, okay, the Berry Islands, and Long Island, okay? And down there in San Salvador, they actually have a research center. Okay, Brief usually conducts research. Um, I know every summer, especially for educators, also for young persons as well, where they actually go out and research the natural environment around them. Okay, mangroves and the coral reefs. Okay, this is just some pictures of the different ecotourism that is offered throughout the Bahamas. Of course, you can go bird watching. Okay, in the pine forest here, you have the pine forest. Of course, you have your pink flamingos. Okay, of course, you see here the floras of the Bahamas. Definitely the marine habitat. Um, of course, you see here as well the Dean's blue hole. Okay, and of course, we don't just have one blue hole throughout the Bahamas. You have many blue holes, especially in places like Andres as well. New Providence has blue holes. So you have blue holes, Kid Island. You also have a lot of your limestone scenery in the Bahamas as well. When you're thinking about the caves, even if you want to stay right here in, in New Providence, for those of you who live in New Providence, you are very familiar with the cave that is um, in Western New Providence, okay, across the road from Orange Hill Beach. So these are definitely some things that tourists want to be a part of. Persons don't always want to travel for shopping reasons, okay? They want to be a part of the natural habitat, okay? So just making sure we're staying on track with time. So let's look at some different examples of ecotourism. So these are just a few, okay? Of course, this is not all. You can always go back and look at some others. So hiking would definitely be considered ecotourism, bird watching, like I mentioned in the, the pictures. Okay, you have your environmental research, like I talked about the Jurace Research Center down there in, in San Salvador. Okay, um, of course, a lot of persons want to photograph nature. So you have photography of nature happening. Definitely snorkeling and scuba diving, okay? Here in the Bahamas, you definitely experience a lot of that with places like Stuart Cove, for example, okay? And of course, you have a lot of persons to just come to see the different animal species and definitely plants as well in that particular country. So just some additional pictures, okay? The first slide had more things Bahamian, but this slide is more international. Okay, you see persons, um, you definitely could have persons moving along the river, lake areas. Okay, they're being able to look at a lot of these different plant species. Of course, we spoke about hiking, these different mountainous areas. Okay, 
You even think about the rainforest and the different types of forests as well. Persons are able to go and enjoy. Okay, so let's look at some of the different advantages. Let's look at some of the different advantages of ecotourism. Okay, so our first advantage, you're gonna see, so you're gonna be able to develop or developing, sustaining and utilizing the natural physical landscape of both flora and fauna as a tourist attraction. Okay, so you're able to go in, of course, the pine forest here in the Bahamas. Okay, you have the corpus forest here in the Bahamas as well. You have a few different forest areas, very beautiful, very nice scenery. Okay, the persons actually uh, enjoy going to, you're able to even go and see different, um, different types of plants that are used for medicinal purposes as well. Okay, persons like myself, we find this very interesting. <laughs> Next, um, preserving the flora and fauna. Okay, you wanna make sure you protect these different habitats. Okay, protect these different species. Um, also creating employment, we know um, employment is very important. Throughout this whole series, we have been looking at the importance um, of these different industries and how they actually create employment. Your things like your tour guides, you have person snorkelers, okay? You have persons in the hotel areas, your receptionists, transport agents as well. Sarah, did you miss out on that? We spoke about that, okay? So flora, like we said, are referring to plants and fauna, we're referring to animals, okay? So flora is plant, fauna is animals, okay? And last but not least, is this, this is considered the principal objective. And of course, we also spoke about this a lot. So two of these, we have been looking at a whole lot throughout the, the in, industry topic from primary, secondary, now in tertiary. You see creating jobs is important and getting that foreign dollar, okay? Foreign exchange, okay? Through the increased tourist arrivals. So that I'm gonna quickly go over these advantages with you. So you have foreign exchange, you have creating employment. You, um, you're talking about preserving flora and fauna, okay? Preserving these different habitats. Okay, and definitely you're able to develop, sustain, and utilize the natural physical landscape as a tourist attraction. Okay, and what this actually helps, like number two says, because, because you are making money from it, it's going to force you to preserve these, these areas. Okay, you're going to stop cutting down the trees. You're going to ensure that your core reach stay nice and healthy. Okay, because these areas are what um, are bringing in the dollar, that foreign exchange to your, or within your economy, okay? So we can see that ecotourism is definitely a good thing. It provides money and it also provides or forces us as humans to protect the natural environment, okay? And last but not least, we're going to wrap up here with disadvantages of ecotourism. So, of course, you're going to have some disadvantages. So, because you have persons interacting with the natural environment, it's going to have some side effects as well. Okay, so let's look at the first one. So, some people feel that ecotourism, firstly, results in environmental hazards, such as destruction to the environment deforestation, whether it's your claim land for transportation, okay? Land deterioration and the disruption of ecological life. So of course, if you put um, humans in a animal habitat, you're going to change the movement of those animals, okay? The animals are now going to start to react differently, okay? You also have persons breaking off leaves of different plants, Okay, so these are some different, of course, disadvantages that are going to be experienced. Next, we're gonna see um, promotes pollution, okay? Whether persons are littering, um, you're gonna have a lot of transportation moving back and forth in these different habitats. That's also going to produce exhaust, okay? 
Also, noise pollution is also a big thing as well. It can be in the form of boat engines. You also have noise pollution coming from cars, whether it be loud music, okay, or maybe loud engines as well. Okay, it's going to threaten the indigenous culture of a particular environment. Okay, threatening of culture is straight across the board a disadvantage because of course you have people coming in, they too have their own culture and they are going to impact the culture that they met there. Next, you're gonna look at natural wildlife. Okay, it may be disrupted, affecting the behavioral patterns of animals as I, I mentioned. And lastly, of course, coral reef. Corals are also going to suffer damages, okay? So some of the things or some of the ways in which tourists are able to damage the coral reefs. A lot of persons, so education is very important. So education will be the solution to a lot of our disadvantages we experience in um, ecotourism. So as I would say, as divers are carrying tourists out, in these coral reef areas, they want to educate them on proper snorkeling practices. Okay, they also want to um, educate them on some of the things to look out for. Do not stand on the coral reefs, do not break the coral reefs off. The coral reefs are not to be used for furniture, okay, or to be removed from the coral reef as well. Okay, so these are some things that should be made aware to the tourists when they're actually interacting with these different environments. Okay, so we are done with all of that ecotourism. So just to close out this series on tourism, we're going to do our review session. And you know, I always get excited when it's time to review. So let's begin. So question number one. So we see, of course, in this photograph, there is a picture of a cruise line. Okay, so question number one asks, identify the type of tourist who uses the accommodation shown in the photo. Identify the type of tourist who uses the accommodation shown in the photo. So I already have two responses. Excellent, Marsha, excellent, Kosia. So those are our cruise tourists, okay? So remember we also looked at some different types of tourists as well last week. Anyone remember any other different types of tourists? Remember we also have our stopover tourists, we have our domestic tourists, our transit tourists. Okay, good job guys. Yes, so let's go into another question. So question two, examine three reasons for the rapid growth of the cruise ship industry. Examine three reasons for the rapid growth of the cruise ship industry. So why do you think that the tourist industry came on stream and it just started blooming? Okay. And of course, when you see a question like this that says examine, you're not just going to list. But here is fine listing because of course we are working with time and we are also working with, um, not really being able to write. Okay, so feel free to list some of the reasons. Why do you think, okay, so I put the answers up. So let's just go over them. Let's just quickly go over them. Okay, so I'm, I saw Marsh in there. So I already have the answers up. So let's quickly go over some of the answers. Okay, so first, so one of the things, definitely the increased size of ships. So of course, we like new things, right? We are humans, we like new things. So we see these nice brand new ships coming on stream. We wanna, we wanna experience it, okay? We wanna experience it. So definitely increasing size of ship. And along with the size of the ships being increased, of course, you're able to accommodate more persons. So that's also another thing that's gonna make them attractive, okay? Another thing that's going to help this industry to grow is these countries or these governments that are, that are supporting the industry and they're supporting the industry by developing new ports and also they're going to deepen the harbor. Okay, that's supposed to be harbor. So the deepening of the harbor or deepening of other ports as well. Okay, so you know you have to have um, a certain depth, water depth to actually be able to accommodate these very large ships. Okay, 
these chips being more modernized as well. So as you have the chips increasing in size, they are becoming more modern. Another thing, of course, you have a lot of the leisure opportunities. You are able to see more than one destination on any travel. Okay, of course, the accommodations that they offer you on board the ship, you have entertainment, you have food, okay, and it's also, it's also cheaper because you don't have to worry about transportation, you don't have to worry about hotel accommodations, okay, so definitely it's all inclusive, a cruise ship would definitely be considered all inclusive, so you can add that in there as well. Okay, and like I said, they're able to transport larger groups of persons, so if you want to do like a family reunion, uh, you want to do this your family and you want to go on vacation this would definitely be a good idea okay so when you have your multi destinations it will be more cost effective because you are just paying for that one trip and you are able to do this i guess from sitting in your home you're able to go and book those cruise um, destinations and in a lot of cases like we mentioned last week you don't even have to bring any money along with you because in a lot of cases you have already booked everything and everything is already paid for. Okay, so let's continue. So I want you to identify three ways in which cruise ships threaten the natural environment. What are three ways in which cruise ships threaten the natural environment? Oh, okay, Kosi, I didn't even have that one on my slide. But that's actually a good one. Okay. So Marsha, yeah. So pollution is definitely one. Okay. And like Kosia said, I guess one of the one of the effects, okay, when you actually have to dredge those harbors, it's going to cause a lot of cementation. That's actually a good answer. Okay, you definitely have um, oil spills and chemicals coming from these ships as well. I'm going to take one more answer. So I'm going to quickly go over this and these answers with you. Okay, so of course the question asks you to just identify. So you just need to identify a few of them. So they asked for three, of course I gave you some more just to get your mind percolating. Okay, so the anchors of the ship. Okay, of course the anchors of the ship could be very hazardous to things such as your coral reefs. Okay, um, the exhaust or the fumes coming from the ship as well, definitely contributing to air pollution. You have the improper discarding of trash. Okay, also the sewage, okay? Sewage being able to escape out into the ocean. And of course, you have fuel or oil contaminating the ocean as well. So I just wanna quickly go back to our previous slide. So remember we said examine. So I just wanna point this out to you. So we used the word examine, okay? And Remember I told you when you were given these answers, when you were given these answers. So of course we stated the different um, reasons. Okay, but when you are in your exam, you don't just state the reasons, you actually examine them. Okay, so if you wanna talk about accommodations, you go and you start, you speak about the accommodation. This is how you're gonna get your six points because remember they only ask you for three reasons but the question is worth six points. So when you state your answer, of course, you're going to give a little bit description along with your answer as well. So just to point that out for you. Okay, so next question. So we, we just did this, so this, this should be fresh in your mind. So what is uh, eco-tourist? What is an eco-tourist? So an eco-tourist, this is a tourist with the intent to experience the natural environment. Okay, yes, a person who visits a place for its environment. Excellent, Kosia, so thank you. So number five, name two attractions a Caribbean country might offer a European visitor. Name two attractions a Caribbean country might offer a European visitor. So of course, when you are thinking about an answer such as this one, you're going to think about all things that may not be in Europe. Don't give me something that Europe actually has, okay? Think about things that will be, I guess, specific to just the Caribbean region, okay? Anyone? Come on, I, I, I'm only seeing Kosia and Marsha for the past couple responses. 
where the rest of my where the rest of my attendees okay are my kashad what happened today kashad paris arjane come on sarah destiny i want you guys to participate as well okay and i hope that you're taking note of the different responses and the different um answers as um also okay so i'm going to look at kosia's answer and then marcia so kosia said the beaches and flamingos okay good stuff okay remember these questions aren't just focused on ecotourism these questions are focused on tourism in general so the whole topic in which we have actually done marcia says food culture so these are some good answers so definitely food culture beaches flamingos Anyone else? The warmer climate, excellent Paris. That is an excellent answer. Okay, and that's actually one of the main responses or one of the main reasons why these persons are coming to our shores. Okay, definitely in a warmer climate. Think about it, guys. Sun, sun, and sea. We advertise that all the time in the Bahamas. The sun, the sun, and the and, and the sea. Okay, because I remember what question we asked. Attraction. Uh, a Caribbean country might offer a European visitor, okay? Name two attractions. So we have some key terms in here as well, attractions and European visitor, okay? What are some of the attractions? I guess you could consider low crime rates being one, uh, but you'd want to think more of an attraction, okay? So let's look at some attractions. So that's, definitely we have the sun, sun, and sea as we mentioned okay you have your cultural attractions remember we talked about the different festivals you have junk canoe you have stopover okay you have carnival throughout barbados jamaica trinidad as well you also have a lot of scenic a lot of scenic environmental areas we don't just have your limestone areas but you have a lot of volcanoes throughout the caribbean as well you have a lot of mountains throughout the caribbean Okay, and of course, you want to look at your marine attractions, your coral reefs, okay? Also, the historical attractions. We didn't mention historical attractions uh, a lot, but historical attractions definitely one. And this is, let's look at the Bahamas, for example. You have places like the Pompeii Museum. You have places like Pirates of Nassau. You have all of these different forts, Fort Charlotte, Fort Nassau, Fort Montague, okay? Fort Fincasso. The 66 steps. These are all, and one of the things as it relates to the Bahamas to, uh, is that you had a lot of Europeans, or a lot of English persons actually living here at one point because this was a European co uh, uh, English colony. So a lot of our history is tied in closely with Europe. So sometimes you have those persons coming to our shore to experience some of that culture or to even hear some of their ancestors names being written in history as well and last but not least we also have the man-made attractions such as the hotels okay places like atlantis you see that they definitely are trying to be attractive they're gonna have the different pool areas the different slides okay someone is asking a question let's go to another question so question number six so let's explain two economic benefits of tourism to the Bahamas. Pay attention to key terms, please. Pay attention to key terms. So the key term here, no, because see, like I tell you, we're not just looking at the environment. We are looking at tourism in general. So the questions that we are asking right now isn't just focus on our presentation for today. This, these are our review questions for the entire tourism topic. Okay, so let's look at some economic benefits of tourism. Our key word there is definitely economic. So when you're giving me your responses, please make sure that they're economic. Okay, Marsha, I see you there with infrastructure development. Okay, Sarah, definitely employment would be economic. I'm going to take one more. Revenue. Okay, excellent. Revenue. So revenue and employment is the two major economic benefits okay revenue and employment when you look at your revenue you definitely want to think about the foreign exchange the dollars coming into your foreign dollars coming into your economy okay you also want to look at how this foreign dollar helps in industrial growth Kosia. so yes you're right okay they actually help in a lot of development throughout the different 
um, economic sectors. Okay, so you're definitely going to see they're bringing money into the economy, the foreign exchange, um, definitely going to create jobs. And also you see here contributing monies to other industries as well. Okay, so yes, guys, so you're all correct. Another question suggests two disadvantages which are likely to result from tourist development. What are two disadvantages likely to result from tourist development? Anyone? What are some disadvantages that you think are likely to be developed from tourists coming to your shores? Okay, good job, Kosia. Pollution, overconsumption of marine species. Okay, excellent. I don't even have that answer. Good job. Traffic congestion. Excellent, Sarah. These are some things I didn't even add to the answer responses, but these are actually some good some good responses, okay? So we have pollution, we have overconsumption of marine species, definitely deforestation, Marsha, excellent. Traffic congestion, yes, these are all right responses. So I'm just gonna share some others with you. So of course, you look at environmental degradation, okay? You're talking about pollution, just as you talk about pollution. Also, you wanna look at, I guess, not just air pollution, but you also have land pollution where you have a lot of garbage being accumulated as well. Okay, you also have pollution um, in our marine habitats. Okay, also forest habitats as well experience these pollution, also litter and so forth. Also seasonal employment, remember we talked about seasonal employment. Okay, persons only coming during a certain time of the year. Um, Another thing is the development of domestic travel is going to decrease visitors from coming, okay? Um, it's gonna lessen the foreign dollar. So when you have domestic tourism developing in these source countries where you're expecting persons to come from, that is going to decrease the amount of persons coming into your country or doing international travel, okay? The impact on tourism, remember we talked about the tourism sector being so attractive that so many persons don't even want to consider being a farmer or participating in any farming activities. They prefer to work in the air condition in the hotels, okay? Also, another thing is the access to beaches. So in a lot of cases, you have um, the majority of our very large hotels being on our coastline areas. And there, there have been um, times where Bahamians were blocked off from accessing those beaches. But there's actually a law against that as well, okay? So another thing is being able to preserve your cultural and natural heritage and definitely being able to keep your social standards, okay? So these are just a few answers. So name three areas from which tourists come to the Bahamas. So name three areas from which tourists come to the Bahamas. This should be pretty easy, I think. What are three areas from which tourists come to the Bahamas? Come on, guys. Excellent, Marsha, North America. Okay, I remember North America is pretty broad. So North America is going to consist. So when you answer a question like this, try to break it down. So don't just say North America. Because remember North America consists of... North America consists of um, not just North America, but it consists of Canada and the United States. Okay, so our three main, so Sarah, I see your answer there. So our three main areas that we're going to get tourists coming from is going to be the United States, Canada, and Europe. Okay. If you want to say the UK in there as well, the UK is a part of Europe, but if you want to be more specific, you could say UK, Canada, and United States. Okay, yes, we have some persons coming from places like Jamaica as well, okay? I see you have um, Haiti in there as well. We don't really consider, I guess, when you think about, we have a large migration coming in, from Haiti, when you think of tourism, the three main areas are going to be North, um, the United States, Canada, and the UK, okay, would be the three main areas. Okay, so our last two questions. So we looked at this, we looked at this last week as well, 
Okay, so a considerable portion of the money spent by tourists in the Caribbean leaves the Caribbean outlined two reasons why the above statement may be true. So a considerable portion of the money spent by tourists in the Caribbean leaves the Caribbean. Outline two reasons why the above statement may be true. Anyone? Okay, so the question is basically asking you, what are some of the different ways in which money is uh, leaving the, the Caribbean economy? What are some of the ways in which money is are leaving the Caribbean economy? Come on, guys, we have like one more minute. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly go over it with you. Taking a little long to respond. Okay, so Kosia, importation. Okay, importation is definitely one. So some ways in which money is leave the country, of course, when we advertise, we typically advertise in foreign countries. Okay, therefore leaving the money in that particular country, not the money is not really circulating throughout the economy in your own country. Okay, you have a lot of the hotels being owned by foreign entities as well. So the money is being make there typically a large percentage of it goes back to the country or the home of that particular hotel you also have revenue that go towards importation like Kosia said um you have a lot of tourists that are prepaying before coming and you have this prepaying experience and things like cool travel and also uh, also all-inclusive hotels as well because in all-inclusive hotels you don't have to pay for anything therefore you don't need to bring any monies with you so that's going to eliminate the spending in that particular country and last but not least let's look at some factors which make the caribbean a tourist destination what are some of those factors that make the caribbean a tourist destination Okay, and in the essence of time, I'm just going to quickly go through some of those factors with you. So I hope that you are able to actually take down some of these responses for these questions in case you may see them again. Okay, so some of the reasons why the Caribbean are or is considered a tourist destination. First of all, the climate. Okay, definitely um, just about a, almost a year round um, warm climate. Okay, even when we have our Christmas time, it's still fairly warm. Okay, also proximity, proximity to these major play countries. Okay, proximity to the United States and of course to Europe and Canada as well. Cultural attractions, um, sea and sand, deep harbors, okay, infrastructural support. We're going to provide the electricity, the roads, okay, the airports. Uh, infrastructure for cruise ships to come in. We have a stable government, okay? We also have governmental support as well because a lot of times you have governments actually providing incentives, okay, to these different hotels, okay? Governments also assist in even a lot of these hotels being built. They give a lot of these hotels things like tax concessions as well, okay? They also provide basic infrastructural facilities such as BPL, water and sewage, okay, the roadways, okay? So these are just some review questions from our whole topic on tourism. So tomorrow, I hope to see you again for our very, very last session. Tomorrow, I want to go over just some quick map work because I want you to also remember that map work is a very, very large portion of the BGCSE exam. So I just want to quickly go through some, some basic map work um, questions with you just to assist you in your review efforts. Okay, so tomorrow will be our last session, guys. Friday is a holiday. So I am... Um, so happy to be here with you over these past weeks. I hope the sessions were vital. I hope they were able to help you or refresh your memory, even keeping your mind going, okay? So it was my pleasure. And that is all for today. So I am wishing you a continued happy Tuesday. Someone, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I see someone is asking a question. Okay, yes, indeed, Kosia, yes, indeed. Okay, so goodbye, everyone.
see you again tomorrow for our last session on grade 12 geography. Thank you.